How about that? Better, isn't it? Okay, that was the first joke. So, some stand up then. And let's see if this watch works. So, duck typing. I love duck typing. This is where you have a problem, so you explain it to a rubber duck, and then the duck solves the problem and types it up for you. <laughs> OK. I was looking into uh, functional data structures, looking at the list. And I have to admit, I couldn't make head or tail of it. <laughs> All right, maybe that's a bit too highbrow. Let's uh, bring it down a notch. Java. It's a great tool for turning coffee into stack dumps. Any Java programmers here? OK, good. You're going to have to help me with this next one. It's a knock-knock joke. So uh, when I say knock-knock, you're going to have to say, who's there? So knock-knock. Who's there? Java. <laughs> All right, let's uh, leave the Java programmers alone. Imagine you have an infinite number of monkeys. You put them in front of a computer keyboard. Now, eventually, one of them is going to write a complete working Java program. <laughs> the rest will be writing Perl. <laughs> All right, back to C++. Here's some C++. It's a random number generator. <laughs> now, I've actually seen code like this in the wild. It's, it's not funny. And actually, to be honest, programmer jokes aren't that funny, really. Fortunately, that's not the type of stand-up that I wanted to talk about. There's another type of stand-up that we often face in our jobs. That's the, uh, the daily stand-up meeting. Who does or has done a daily stand-up meeting? Quite a few people. So we're all familiar with them. The idea is you know, we, we do these meetings regularly, maybe daily, um, and we want to keep them short, maybe uh, less than 15 minutes. That's why we stand up. So we feel uncomfortable. We, we want to keep it short. So who's done a stand-up meeting that's more than 20 minutes? Half an hour? An hour? Yeah, still a few hands. Who's done a daily stand-up meeting where everyone sits down? Quite a few, yeah. All right, all right, what about this one? Who's been on a project where someone high up felt that by doing daily stand-ups, it made you more agile? <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite a few. Well, it's good to rant about these things, but that's not the type of stand-up I wanted to talk about either. So. Actually, oh, it's not going to work, is it? There we go. I want to do a bit of science. Familiar with this meme? Stand back, I'm going to try some science. Well, I'm going to modify that a bit and say, if it works, stand up. I want to try some science. So I want to take this literally. Everyone, stand up. And yes, that means you. OK, now this is interesting. Just in the process of moving from a sitting to a standing position, you've increased the flow of oxygen to your brain by about 20%. And that's made you slightly smarter than you were just a moment ago. <laughs> so it's a real shame that we spend so much of our working lives sitting down. That's actually worse than that. We'll get to that in a moment. But just how much time do we spend sitting? Well, you tell me. Ah, doesn't help if I get tweets coming through. OK. <laughs> so if you feel that you spend, on an average working day, less than three hours sitting, you can sit down now. Yeah, just, just one or two. All right, next group. If you feel you spend less than six hours a day on an average working day sitting, you can sit down now. A few more, but most people are still standing. So. You six pluses, I'm going to let you sit down as well now, but pay close attention to the next part. So, you may remember this infographic that was going around on the internet a few years ago. Sitting is killing you. It's, uh, it's quite long. Uh, lots of shocking statistics and facts in there. And right at the end, there's this handy list of references to back it all up. Unfortunately, because it's an infographic, you can't click on them. And they're actually quite hard to read. So I did the job of transcribing them all so you can read them. And I even went as far as clicking on them 
and reading all of the links, and also following the references from those, and in some cases, the references of the references, and cross-referencing them all. So I made sure that this actually backed up all the facts in the infographic, and mostly it did. A few bits you can read things into it. I just want to pick out one of the statistics that was in there. So, according to this, if you sit for six or more hours a day, which remember was most of you, you're actually 40% more likely to die in the next 15 years than those who sit less than three, which is the first group. That's actually quite a sobering statistic. So we were joking around earlier, but now we're now getting serious. And here's the real kicker. That's true even if you exercise. So if you thought that going to the gym three times a week was going to get you out of this, well, it doesn't. Those references I mentioned earlier, a lot of them actually led back to a body of work by uh, this guy, James Levine. He's uh, de dedicated a large chunk of his life to this, written a few books on it. Uh, one of these books, he says this, quoting from a doctor, actually, uh, going to the gym even several times a week does not reverse the harmful effects of sitting. To be clear, it does help, but it doesn't completely overcome a sedentary lifestyle. So what's the solution? There's actually a, quite a neat solution where NEAT is an acronym which stands for Non-Exercise non Activity Thermogenesis. And that's just a fancy way of saying everyday activities. So the thermogenesis part is just the way we refer to the uh, energy expenditure of your, your body. It's a measure of heat. And we have a unit for that, the calorie, which scientifically is defined as the energy needed to increase one gram of water by one Celsius. To be clear, that's what we call the, the small calorie, what we use in, in science. Um, if you read nutrition labels or talk about exercise, we talk about killer calories. Um, we talk about them so often, we just call them calories as well. It can be a bit confusing at first, but it's a thousand times different, so you shouldn't get them mixed up. But bear that in mind. Now, where it gets interesting is there's a certain number of calories that our bodies burn, just keeping you alive, keeping the organs running, your heart pumping, lungs breathing, brain ticking over. And this is called the basal metabolic rate. It's just a baseline. It varies from person to person, depending on your build and age and so on. For me, it works out about 1850 kilocalories a day. Uh, for most people, it's going to be somewhere around that sort of figure. Um, the exact numbers don't matter, but there's this, this rate. Now, of course, we spend most of our time, sorry, not most of our time, a fair chunk of our time sleeping. So and that's at uh, the basal metabolic rate, that's fine. On an average working day, we'll get up in the morning, hopefully get ready, and do all our bits and pieces before we shoot out the door. So we're burning about, you know, another 20 to 30 calories there. Not much more than the basal metabolic rate. And then, for a lot of us, we'll have a commute into the office, where we'll be sitting for about half an hour to an hour. Bit of activity while we get into the office, and then, for the rest of the day, or a large chunk of it, as you said yourselves, spend most of that time sitting, barely above the basal metabolic rate most of that time. A few little spikes. And even if we go out for lunch, a lot of us have lunch at our desks. If we go out, maybe we just go out to a nearby restaurant and sit down again. We're sitting all this time and commuting back, of course. But we tell ourselves, it's OK, because in the evening, or lunchtime, or whenever we can fit it in, I'm going to go to the gym. But we just learned that doesn't actually reverse the effects. So I've jumped on a slide there. So the solution now we know what the problem is, because it's not the total calories we're talking about here. It's breaking up these periods of sitting. We just need to insert more breaks. Ideally, at least every hour, we should spend at least uh, two to five minutes um, doing something other than sitting, preferably walking around. It doesn't have to be you know, brisk walking. You don't have to stop working. You, know, you can be talking on the phone, talking to a colleague, just go down the hall to speak to someone instead of emailing them. All these little tricks that we hear about. But we just want to break up those periods, long periods of sitting, because that's what's doing the damage. The 
The other thing we can do, if we have the opportunity, is to get one of those uh, standing sitting desks. I've got one. We don't want to be standing all the time either, but if you alternate periods of standing and sitting, interspersed with these breaks, then we're really going to be a long way towards overcoming this, this problem with our sedentary lifestyles. If you want to really take it up a notch, though, XKCD has you back. Let's give you a moment to read that. Now, this is why I know so much about this. This was me a couple of years ago. This was me just last December. So I'm a bit more like that now. Uh, just to put that into figures, I was 133 kilograms in, down to 80.9. That's a loss of 52 kilograms, or if you prefer, 114 pounds, 8.1 stone. Thank you. Now, that wasn't just through the, the neat activity stuff. Uh, there was a whole thing of nutritional change and so on. Um, and if you want to find out more about that and a lot more about fitness and nutrition in the context of programmers, I've done a couple of longer talks on that. If you go to my website, levelofindirection.com, there's a, this tab here, Appearances. You can see my previous talks and there's a couple of videos. The talk is Mensana Incorpore Sano. So, I recommend going to see that. Now, before I wrap up, a couple of things. Uh, it'd be great if you could support me doing the, uh, the London Free Peaks Challenge next month by uh, donating something to my Just Giving campaign in support of uh, cancer research. I'm going to be running up three of the tallest towers in London and running between them and then abseiling down the last one. So, that'd be great. And then one more thing from that James Levine book that I took away. He talks about the muscles, particularly in the legs. And apparently the muscles, the outer layer is called the fascia. And the interesting thing about the fascia is that it molds itself to the position it finds itself in most of the time. So if you're mostly sitting, it molds itself into a sitting position. If you're mostly standing, mostly a standing position. Which means you're more comfortable sitting if you're sitting most of the time. And the reverse is true, if you're standing walking most of the time, you're more comfortable doing that. And it's changed from one to the other. It only takes a week or two. So the more you're standing and walking, the more comfortable that becomes for you. So now we have scientific proof that daily stand-ups do make you more agile. <laughs> Thanks for being a stand-up crowd.